talk for just briefly about the title of this class because I feel that it could create a really nice framework for this practice and in general for practicing yoga asana. So hi to anyone who's joining now and didn't hear. I'm just uh, explaining the title of this class so that we can have a sort of framework to practice within. Um, it's called flowing into stillness. And I just wanted to explain what that means. Like, what is flowing into stillness? So we're flowing, we're doing the physical postures, the asana, the practice, in order to ultimately reach a state of stillness within ourselves. And what does that mean? What happens in the state of stillness? Um, in the stillness is where we become completely present in the moment. And this is a place where there are no stories about the past, there's no past trauma going on. We're not stuck in that. And there's no anxieties and worries about the future. So like what's gonna be after Corona? No one knows. So in this present moment is where none of that exists. And we can connect to something that's a lot bigger and deeper than all the fluctuations of the mind, all these stories that our mind is telling us all the time. And um, so this is a place where we can really connect to our deepest and highest selves and connect to our infinite potential as human beings, connect to our highest potential, and also reach, reach a state of, uh, of um, peace and joy and love within ourselves and the people around us. So that's the idea. That's the whole idea of, of moving, of the physical part of yoga, of the asana. And for those of you who, um, I talked about this a bit online <laughs> this morning, so for those of you who already saw that, uh, now you're hearing it again. And I just wanted to think about this and try, if we can see if we can try to integrate this within our practice um, by keeping a sort of body-centered awareness whenever we find our mind wandering, thinking about, I don't know, our last breakup or what we're gonna do after Corona or what's tomorrow. Use our breath as an anchor to bring us back inside our body and to bring us back into this present moment. So, yeah, let's just find a place, a, a comfortable space in the front of our mat. And you can sit in any cross-legged position, whatever's comfortable for you. If you'd like, you can sit up on a block or a bolster, cushion. Just making sure that your spine is straight. Resting your palms on your knees face down. You could begin to close your eyes. Relaxing your shoulders down. Relaxing your jaw. Connecting to this moment. And let's just start by noticing what's present. What's present in our body? What physical sensations do we feel? So maybe you feel the contact between your sit bones and the ground or your palms resting on your knees. Maybe you feel physical tension in different areas of the body, maybe in the shoulders, maybe in the lower back. Just noticing what's present in the body right now. And then shifting our attention to our awareness. So that's a little funny to say, but just noticing what the state of your awareness is right now. So is your mind overly active? Are you jumping from thought to thought? Do you feel kind of jumpy, jittery? Or maybe you feel a little bit foggy or stuck stagnant from not moving a lot. Or maybe you feel a more expansive, open feeling, more receptive energy. So just noticing where, where you're at, where your awareness is at right now. Practicing this sense of awareness, what's going on? What's going on within me right now before we practice? Taking a deep breath through the nose. Mm. 
and exhaling through the nose. Noticing what parts of your body move in response to your breath. Feeling the sensation of the breath as it comes in through your nose and passes through the back of your throat, filling your chest, filling your lungs. Allowing your lower belly to expand. And slowly letting out the air first from your lower belly. Feeling it as it comes through the chest, through the back of the throat. And back out through the nose. following the sensations that you feel as you inhale and you exhale, paying attention to its pathway. And really allowing your lower belly to expand because when we allow our lower belly to expand, we're also relaxing our mind. Just a few moments in silence. As we keep our awareness on the sensations of the breath coming in and out of the body. Remembering our breath as our anchor and our biggest ally in our practice to bring us back inward. Let the breath relax you. And gently bring your awareness back to your body. Gently opening your eyes or keeping them closed. We're going to start warming up the neck by bringing the right shoulder to the right ear. And bringing it around to the left. Continuing the circle all the way back to the right. And continuing in this circular motion, just rolling out the neck, seeing what feels good. We want to go a little faster, slower. And switching direction. So now to the left. And noticing if there's any tension, if there's any areas you might want to stop and give a little extra attention to. We'll move on to the shoulders. So by cupping the shoulders with your fingertips, we're going to first start by circling backwards. So we're going to bring our elbows together and start drawing circles, large circles backwards. So we're warming up the shoulder joints. And switching directions. So now drawing the circles forward. Good. And now either making a fist or keeping your hands open, we're just going to circle out the wrist, turning them outward. Maybe switching direction. Good. Now we're going to sit on our knees. So if this is uncomfortable for you, you can also place a block in between your knees and sit up on that. Otherwise, sit on your heels, sorry. 
and clasp your fingers together except for your index finger. So your index finger is pointing up. You're gonna lift your hands on the inhale. Make sure that your shoulders are away from your ears. And we're gonna start drawing circles, moving our spine with the movement. So our, our palms are really directing this movement, but our spine is following. And we can synchronize this movement with the breath. Because when we open our chest, when we go backwards, we inhale. And as we come forwards and round our back, we exhale. So go as slow as you need to. And really try to feel into your own body. This might look different for everyone. Just feeling your spine moving and what feels good to you. And switching directions. and slowly release. So we're gonna stay on our knees, but we're gonna bring our knees hip distance apart. And we're gonna come up. Stretching both arms out in front of us. We're gonna turn our left palm to face the left side of the room. And we're gonna sweep our right palm underneath and clasp fingers. On the inhale, we're gonna open our chest and reach our arms up overhead. And on the exhale, we're gonna curl our arms under, rounding our back, bringing our chin to our knees. Inhale, curl up and out, opening the chest to the sky. And exhale, curling under, coming in, rounding the spine. Inhale, we come up. And exhale, down. One more time, inhale opening up to the sky, and exhale, curling in. Okay, we're gonna meet on uh, all fours. So that means that your shoulders are above the wrists, your hips are above the knees, and we're gonna do a few cat-cows to warm up the spine even more. On the inhale, we're gonna allow the belly to drop and the tailbone to come up, opening up our chest, looking up. And on the exhale, we tuck the tailbone under, rounding our spine, bringing our chin to our chest. On the inhale, let the belly drop, opening the chest. And on the exhale, rounding our spine, pressing through the mat. Inhale, cat. Cow, sorry. And exhale, cat. Just a few more times at your own pace, synchronizing with the breath. And if you have any extra movements you like to do here to warm up your spine, feel free to do so. And we come back to center. From here, we're gonna tuck our toes under, press our palms into the mat, and come up to downward facing dog. Maybe pedaling out the feet here, stretching our hamstrings. Just getting used to this first downward dog, maybe the first one of the day, maybe not. You feel free to bend your knees here. You want the spine to be lengthening. On the inhale, we bend our knees even more, looking forward and stepping slowly to the front of our mat. Keeping our feet hip distance apart, hands on the shins, we come into a half lift. And on the exhale, we allow the top of our body to drop and soften forward, grabbing the opposite elbows and allowing our body to maybe sway back and forth if that feels good. And allowing the shoulders to be heavy, the head to be heavy, all the facial muscles to relax. And gently dropping the hands down. And on the next inhale, we start to roll up the spine, vertebrae after vertebrae. The head coming up last. From here, we're gonna bring our feet to about hip distance apart. We're gonna inhale our arms up overhead, making sure that our shoulders are away from the ears. And we're gonna come up onto our toes. Very simple, we're just standing on our toes. So just breathing here, a few breaths, maybe 
focusing on a point on the wall in front of you if that helps you balance. And now slowly starting to bend your knees, coming down with a lot of control. But don't come all the way down. Come to your edge where you feel like you're really working. You're not relaxed. And just breathe here. Feeling your legs engage, your core is engaging. On the next inhale, we slowly with control come back up onto our toes. And on the exhale, we bend our knees one more time. Slowly coming down with control. Breathe here. And now slowly come back up. And release the heels back, release the hands down. Maybe shake out the legs a bit, shake out the arms. And we'll come into a few rounds of sun salutations. So keeping your feet hip distance apart and keeping your tailbone in so we're not having a banana back over here. On the inhale, we reach our arms up overhead, gazing at the fingertips. And on the exhale, we come down with a straight back and soften to Uttanasana. Inhale, hands on the shins. We lengthen our spine, half lift. And exhale, we place the palms on the ground, step back to plank. So in plank, our shoulders are over our wrists. Our fingers are spread wide on the mat. And there's weight coming back towards the heels. So let's just engage our core here, making sure that our hips are not sagging or coming up. And we're gonna lower our knees, come all the way down to the floor. On the inhale, we press our palms into the ground, keeping our elbows bent and bringing them in towards each other. Coming into Cobra. And on the exhale, we press into the mat, tucking our toes under, pressing up and back to downward dog. So really pressing the mat through your palms, making sure that all your knuckles are on the ground. Firming our forearms in. And lifting the hips up and back. Remember, you can keep your knees bent here if you need. And on the next inhale, we bend our knees, look forward and step to the front of our mat. Coming into half lift. And all the way down, Uttanasana. Inhale, we come all the way up, Urvastasana. And exhale, hands to heart. One more time, inhale, arms all the way up, gazing at the fingertips, opening the chest. Exhale, coming all the way down to Uttanasana. Inhale, hands on the shins, half lift, lengthen the back of the neck. And exhale to plank. So once you're in plank, you have the option to go all the way to chaturanga, or you can do chaturanga with knees down. So the way we do chaturanga is by shifting our weight to the balls of our feet so that our shoulders are coming in front of our wrists. And from here, we can come down so that we have a 90 degree angle in our elbows. Inhale, we slide through, upward facing dog. And exhale, coming back to downward dog. Tuning back in with the breath. Really feeling as if we're stretching the mat. Feel as if your armpits are trying to look towards each other. So there's an external rotation in the arm. And the next inhale, we bend our knees, look forward. Step or hop to the front of your mat. Inhaling for half lift, Ardha Uttanasana. 
and exhale, Uttanasana. So now, this time we're gonna bend our knees in Uttanasana, letting our chest just rest on our upper thighs. And on the inhale, we sweep our arms up and over, coming into chair pose. So our weight is coming back into the heels. And on the exhale, we lower our arms, take them up and back, resting our chest on our knees again, clasping our fingers, and bringing them over our head. Inhale, we sweep our arms down and over, coming into chair. And exhale, down and back, clasping our fingers, opening up our shoulders. Inhale, coming into chair. And exhale, clasping our fingers. Inhale, this time we stay in chair, using our back muscles to keep our chest open, making sure we could see our toes. Bring your hands to heart, straighten your legs, and close your eyes. Tuning in with the body, tuning in with the breath. Take a moment to really feel the change in your body, feel the benefits. How the postures really bring us back into the present moment. Because when we face challenging postures or any sort of challenge, we are completely in the moment. We're not thinking about what we did yesterday or what we did tomorrow. Inhaling the arms up, gazing at the fingertips, opening the chest. And exhaling, Uttanasana. Inhale, half lift, hands on the shins. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urva Mukha. Exhale, Adho Mukha. Now from downward dog, we're just gonna roll our weight over the plank. And we're gonna roll our weight on the right side of our foot. So the outer side of the right foot is on the mat. The shoulder is over the wrist. And see if this is comfortable for you. This might be okay, this might be too much. And if it is, you place your left foot in the front of your hip, 90 degrees, inhaling the left arm up and making sure really that your hips are lifting up towards the sky. So think as if there's like a string pulling the side of your body upward. Breathing here, pressing the mat with every part that's really touching the, the mat, pressing into the ground. And from here, if your feet are stacked, take the top foot, place it behind you about 90 degrees, pushing your hips up and your left arm forward, gazing at your left fingertips, breathing here. On the exhale, we slowly come back to plank. This time switching sides, so rolling to the left side of your body, shoulders over the wrist, either stacking your feet or placing your right foot in front of you. Inhale, gaze up towards the right fingertips, lifting your hips up towards the sky, pressing your palm and foot into the ground. And come here, either stacking your legs or placing your foot in back of you, coming straight into wild thing. Sending the right arms overhead, gazing at the fingertips, pressing that right foot into the mat to lift our hips. And coming back to plank. From here, we lower our knees, keeping them wide. Our big toes come to touch and we sit back on our heels in child's pose. Putting our forehead to the ground and just allowing ourselves to let go completely.
Taking a deep inhale into the lower belly. And exhale through the mouth. Letting out any tension. Resting in the comfort of Balasana. Another deep inhale into the lower belly. Letting it expand. And breathing out through the mouth. From child's pose, we're gonna lift up to downward dog. So we tuck our toes under, pressing our palms into the mat, lifting our hips up and back. Breathing here just for a moment. And in the inhale, we lift our right foot up, keeping our hips in line, so hips are leveled. We're not opening them up, not yet. Inhale. And exhale, we step the right foot on the outside of both of our palms, lowering the back knee down. And from here, we're gonna come into lizard. So your front toes can go a little bit outwards. We're gonna press the left palm into the mat, so lifting our chest, and maybe taking our right palm and kind of opening up that hip a little bit from the knee. Seeing if that feels okay. From here, we step the foot back down. This might be enough for us today, or we might try to come down to our elbows. And once we found our position, we can relax our head downward and just breathe here, allowing our breath to help us deeper into the stretch. Really pressing that right foot into the ground to bring the knee back to the center line. So the leg is active. From here, we press our palms into the mat, tuck our back toes under to create space and lift our kneecap, and then bring the right leg back to downward facing dog to meet the left. On the next inhale, we lift our left leg, keeping our hips leveled, not opening the hip yet. Pressing both palms into the mat. Inhale. And on the exhale, we step the foot outside the palms, lowering the back knee down, untucking the toes. So the left toes can turn outward slightly. And we press the right palm into the mat, taking the left palm and pressing it in, into the left knee. So opening up that hip a little bit to the left side if that feels okay for you. From here, step the foot down. You might need to stay here, or if you wanna challenge yourself, you might try to come onto your forearms. Once you've found your posture, you can relax your head down. And if you have a block here, it can be nice also to rest your head on the block. Pressing that left foot into the ground. And feeling that stretch. Breathing into any discomfort you might be feeling. Allowing it to just drop away, fall away with ease. On the next inhale, we press the palms into the mat, tuck the back toes under, lift the kneecap to create space, and bring the left leg to join the right back to downward facing dog. So from here we could bend our knees, and let's try to do a deep downward dog where we really stretch the spine. So we're pressing the palms, opening up the shoulders even more. Take an inhale here. And on the exhale, we start to send the heels down. 
From here, we're going to come to Malasana. Um, and to get there, you have the option either to walk or to hop. So if you want to hop, you want to try, you can bend your knees, shifting the weight to the hands and coming to a squat. I'll show you from here because I think it might be easier. So your toes are facing outwards and your hips are sitting all the way down. Your weight is towards your heels. And once you're down here, you want to use your upper arms to really press into the knees and open the chest bringing the palms to the chest. So breathing here for a moment. And from here, we're gonna take a bakasana. So placing your arms down, placing your palms down in front of you, we're just gonna play with shifting the weight. So if you haven't done this before, don't worry. If you do go right into it, we're going to bring our knees as close as we can to our armpits, lifting our heels off the ground. So we're coming up onto our toes. Our knees are coming either to our upper arms or our armpits. And we press our palms into the mat, begin to shift the weight forward towards our hands. From here, maybe we feel okay to lift one foot, maybe both, but we want to just see where we are today. And if we already have it, we can begin to straighten our arms. And just play with that. You can play a few times just by shifting the weight. Maybe it looks like this for you. Maybe your legs come all the way off the ground. Just trying to bring some sort of playfulness to it. From here, we're going to straighten our knees, heel to our feet in a little bit more so that they're hip distance. Grab the opposite elbows and allow the top of our body to release and soften down. Maybe swaying back and forth a little bit. Maybe bending our knees here. Really relax our hamstrings. Softening the facial muscles. In the next inhale, we allow the arms to drop and roll up our spine. Head coming up last. We meet on the top of our mat. Just taking a moment with eyes closed. Tuning into the body, utilizing the breath. Bringing us back to here and now. opening our eyes, taking in our surroundings again. On the inhale, we step the right foot back, turning towards the right foot. So the back leg is parallel to the short side of the mat, and the front leg is parallel to the long side, and we have a heel to heel or heel to arch alignment here in the feet. On the inhale, we reach our arms up so that they're shoulder tight, making sure the shoulders are away from the ears. On the exhale, we pop the left hip back. Inhale, we stretch that right arm forward, leading us towards the right side of the room. And then exhale, we allow the right arm to drop, reaching the left arm up and gazing at the left fingertips. Coming into Trikonasana, triangle pose. Making sure that our core is not collapsing into the bottom leg, so we're not grabbing the leg, but we might be using the leg, um, using the back of the palm to sort of press against that shin so we can open our chest up towards the sky. And if you feel like a hyperextension in the front knee, you can keep a micro bend. Otherwise, just breathing here for one more moment. On the next inhale, we come back up. And on the exhale, we bring the hands to the hips. Turning towards that front leg and lifting the back heel off the mat. So the back heel is right above the toes. So you want to make sure that the heel is not coming down, but that we're actually lifting the kneecap and activating that back leg. And the front knee is over the ankle. On the inhale, we lift the arms up and breathe. 
engaging the core, making sure that we're pressing that front leg, the front foot into the ground. So we're engaging the hamstrings, engaging the thighs. From here, we're going to slowly start to shift our weight forward, bringing our hands to prayer, eventually lifting the back foot off the mat, coming into warrior three. So in warrior three, we want to make sure that the hips are leveled. So we're going to bring that left hip back down, keeping our chest open. Our torso comes parallel to the ground, keeping the neck long. Breathing here. Really tuning into our sense of groundedness, stability, our willpower. And slowly bringing that knee up. If you need to step it down in between, that's totally fine. From here, we're going to come into sort of one-legged squat. So we're going to bend the right knee, creating a little shelf for the left ankle, placing that left ankle, I'll show you from this side, on the knee, bringing our hands to prayer and slowly starting to squat down. So the weight is coming back towards the heels. You wanna make sure that the weight is not coming to the toes. And you don't have to go so far here. Just feel that you're active, your legs are active. Feel like you can bring your arms up, keeping your chest open. And gently release. I think there's something weird on my screen. See where you are. Okay. No, that's fine. Okay. So from here, we're coming back to Tadasana. And this time on the inhale, we step the left leg back, turning towards that left leg. So the front of the foot is parallel to the long side, the back is to the short side, heel to heel or heel to arch. Inhaling the arms up, shoulders tight. Exhale, we pop that right hip back. Inhale, we reach the left arm forward. And exhale, we lower the hand to the ground, reaching the right arm up to the sky and turning our chest towards the sky, engaging our core. Breathing here. On the inhale, we come back up. Exhale, hands to the hips. Turning towards the left foot, we begin to bend that left knee. Lift the back kneecap up and keep the heel over the toes. Inhaling the arms up, keeping them away from the shoulders, keeping the core engaged, pressing the feet into the mat. Breathing here in high lunge. Bringing the hands to prayer and slowly starting to shift the weight towards that left foot. Lifting the left foot off, sorry, the right foot off the ground. Trying to keep our torso parallel to the ground and keeping our chest open, our neck long. Always trying to bring that right hip back down towards the ground. Toes are pointing towards the ground, not to the side. Connecting to our sense of stability. Breathe. And slowly start to bring the right knee up in front of us. Bending the left knee to create a little shelf and placing the right ankle a bit above the knee. Hands to prayer and slowly start to sink backwards towards the heels. From here, you, want, you might want to Lift your arms up, opening the chest, allowing for more expansion. And gently releasing. Maybe shaking out your feet a little bit. Great job. 
I hope everyone's feeling just a little sweaty. It's always good to feel a little sweaty. On the inhale, we reach arms up overhead, gazing at the fingertips, coming into a vinyasa all the way to Uttanasana on the exhale. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, half lift. Exhale, Chaturanga. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha. And exhale, Adho Mukha. Pressing through the mat, five breaths here. One. Two. Three, turn the forearms in. Four. And five. Bend the knees, look forward, come to a seated position. Bring the legs out in front of you, coming into staff pose. So there's flex in both of our feet. Zip bones are heavy on the mat, making sure our spine is straight. On the inhale, we reach our arms up overhead, keeping them away from the shoulders. Sorry, keeping the shoulders away from the ears. And on the exhale, we come forward and down. So we're really thinking about bringing our chest to our thighs and not our nose to our knee. We're trying to come down with a straight back. And when you reach your edge, you can release your head down. Making sure we're not pushing or pulling. We're really just listening to where our body is today. And working with our body today, working with what's, what's here in the present. Breathing. Trying to bring a sense of softness. Relaxing the face. And gently releasing the pose. Coming back up. We're gonna bend the right knee and step it on the outside of the left thigh. So either you can stay in here, we're gonna come into a seated twist. Um, or if you like, you can bend your left knee, which is what I'm gonna do. Place your right arm in back of you. Inhale, the left arm comes up, extending from the base of the spine through the crown of the head. And then exhale, we bring the shoulder to the right knee, to the outside of the right knee, and twist deeper. So with every inhale, really think about lengthening. And with every exhale, we twist a little bit deeper into the pose, gazing over the back shoulder, Making sure you really hear the end of each inhale and exhale. So you're not cutting them short. You're not stopping in the middle. Gently coming out of the pose. We're going to stack the right knee on top of the left. Coming into Gomukhasana or a cow face pose. So it looks like this. And we're going to inhale, the left arm comes up. Exhale, we bend that elbow. So we can use the help of our right palm to really bring that elbow more towards the center of the spine. And then sweep that right arm underneath to grab the fingertips. And if we can't grab the fingertips, then you can grab your shirt or you can use a strap if you have one around. And if you already have your fingertips, um, if you can already grab your fingertips, you can start to lift your chin up. So you're really creating a deeper opening in the shoulders here. Close your eyes, just breathe here, really feeling that stretch in your shoulders. And gently release. The bottom arm, release the top arm. Straightening both legs out in front of us. 
This time we're gonna bend the left leg, step it over the right thigh. So that it comes to the outside. You can either stay here with the straight leg, keeping the foot flexed, or you can bring it back in just like we did on the other side. Placing the left arm in back of us to support the spine. We don't wanna be collapsing into it, just the support. On the inhale, the right arm comes up, we extend. And on the exhale, we bring the elbow to the outside of the knee, twisting deeper, gazing over the back shoulder. We're using that elbow to press against the knee to twist deeper into the pose. Full breath. And gently release. This time stacking that left knee on top of the right. We inhale the right arm up. And we exhale, we bend the elbow. We can use the help of the left palm to bring it more towards center. And then sweep that left palm under, grabbing our fingertips, lifting our chin and opening up. And again, grab whatever you can. If you can't grab your fingertips, grab your shirt or the strap. And just breathe. Getting into where we feel this in the body, the sensations in the body. Even if they're subtle. And gently releasing both arms down, straightening both legs out in front of us. And coming down to lie on our back. So from here, we're going to come into shoulder stance. Um, so just bend your knees in towards your chest, pressing both palms on the side of you into the mat. We're going to lift the hips off the mat, resting your knees on our forehead. And from here, we're gonna take our palms to support our lower back or our hips. Once they're stable, we can begin to straighten the legs. Making sure that both legs are active and the toes are pointed. We're really trying to bring the chest more towards the chin and not the chin towards the chest. So we wanna make sure that the weight is not all falling on our neck, but it's mostly on our shoulders because it's the shoulder span. And just relax here. As the nervous system relaxes, this also stimulates the digestive system. It's starting to move, suck waste around the body and really get things going. And here we're going to keep our legs straight and come all the way down to Halasana. So we're going to bring our arms down to the ground. I'm a little too close to the couch here. And if you can't go all the way back straight, you can also bend your knees, bring them to your forehead, and then just lower them down that way. And if you can't straighten them, keep them bent. Otherwise, if they're straight, you have the option to interlace your fingers behind your back and really keep your legs active. So you're pressing those toes into the ground, lifting the kneecaps. And breathing here. From here, we're going to lower our knees down to the sides of our ears and place slight pressure onto our ears, coming into ear pressure pose. They might not hear me in this position, but just press your knees slightly against your ears, otherwise relax them by the sides. Getting a deep compression here.
We're going to straighten our legs again and bend them, resting our knees on our forehead, bringing our palms to support our lower back. We're going to help our hips guide down all the way towards the mat. From here, we're going to grab the outsides of our feet, coming into happy baby, so bringing the heels over the knees and maybe bringing the elbows on the inside so that we create some more space and a wider opening here. Taking a deep inhale. And on the exhale, we press the feet down towards the ground. The upper thighs are parallel to the mat. Inhale, back up just a little bit. And exhale, press down. Feeling the lower back really come towards the ground. And if you like here, you can sway, rock a bit from side to side. Be a little happier, baby. And from here, we're going to see if we could rock forward. Actually, we're just going to let the knees down. Let's just do it this way this time. And come up to a seated position. So sitting in any seated position that's comfortable for you, you can sit in the same position you were sitting in the beginning of the class. We're going to do uh, a few minutes of Nadi Shodana, which is alternate nostril breathing. And it's a breathing technique, like we talked about a little bit in the beginning of the class, how we can use breathing techniques to bring us back into the present, including asana, including the physical postures. Uh, so yoga is really a whole system. It's not just the physical movement. And um, this particular pranayama or breathing technique is really great to relax the nervous system. It balances both hemispheres of the brain, uh, the masculine, feminine energies in the body. Um, it's great for stress, anxiety. It's really, really great for to practice always. So <laughs> let's just start. Um, placing your index and your middle finger on your third eye. So it's a point uh, in the middle of your forehead but a bit above your eyebrows over here. Your thumb is gonna be just resting on the right nostril and the ring finger on the left. Now we're not pressing down, so we're still able to breathe. We're gonna breathe all the air out of our body. And then the inhale, we're gonna press through the right nostril and breathe through the left. Holding for a moment, then blocking the left nostril off we're gonna breathe out through the right nostril. Holding for a moment. Inhaling through the right. Close the right, exhale out the left. Inhale through the left. Close it off, exhale the right. Inhale, close it off, exhale. Now we're gonna continue doing what we're doing, but we're gonna add a count to four. So we're gonna inhale for four counts, we're gonna hold for four counts, exhale for four counts, and then hold for four counts. So it looks like this. Inhale through the left, one, two, Three, four, hold. One, two, three, four, out. One, two, three, four, hold it out. One, two, three, four. Inhale through the right. One, two, three, four, hold. One, two, Three, four, out the left. One, two, three, four, hold. One, two, three, four. Just keep going in this manner. And if it's too hard for you to hold your breath for that long, you can make the counts just a bit shorter. So really uh, adjust it to your own needs.
a few more rounds. One last one, in through the right. Hold. And out through the left. Relax your palms down. We're gonna prepare for Shavasana. So stretching your legs out in front of you. Legs are mat distance apart. Toes are relaxed out to the sides. Arms are slightly away from the body, palms facing up. The back of our neck is long. And we allow the body to feel heavy. Relaxing, scanning our whole body to see where we can release, where we can let go, relax more. Relaxing our shoulders. Relaxing our chest, feeling it melt into the ground. Relaxing all our facial muscles and our jaw. Our eyelids. The space between the eyebrows. Vasana is really the most important pose. And this is because when your body is moving, it's a lot easier for our mind to be still, like we've seen earlier. When you're focusing on balancing, when you're focusing on a challenge, you are immediately brought to the present. But it's a lot more difficult for our mind to be still when our body is also still. And when we start to practice this, we start to see the real benefits of yoga in our lives. So let's keep a body-centered awareness. Let our thoughts go and just really observe the effects of this practice in our body, on our consciousness.
gently starting to bring some movement back into your fingers and your toes. Maybe wiggling them, maybe circling your wrists or your ankles. Starting to become aware of your body. And stretching your arms out above your head, clasping your fingers, reaching them up behind you, maybe pointing your toes, taking one last full body stretch. And then releasing your arms down, bringing your knees in towards your chest and rolling around to the right side of your body. Breathing here for a few breaths. And then using your left palm to help you up to seated, come up with your eyes closed. Bringing your palms together at heart center and gently bowing your head to your heart. Taking a moment to thank yourself for creating a space and time for your own wellness, for your own well being, and for the well being of those around you. Taking the time to think about how we can integrate this presence in the moment into our day-to-day -day lives, how we can bring what we learn on the mat to our lives and bring more good into our lives and the lives of others. Thank you all for joining. I'm grateful we could still continue to practice even on this weird digital alternate reality platform. <laughs> Namaste, thank you so much.